Hello, people of the internet. <clears throat> Today we're going to look at the Browning Buckmark. And I haven't dug into this one, so I learned something new today. Put on the old glasses and get ready to go. Um, I have seen Buckmarks that have some features that I really wish mine had. Uh, notably, um, grip extensions on the back of the the slide here. Uh, mine's kind of hard to grab onto. I came up with this uh, indentation and serrations, but uh, realistically, when it's forward, that kind of puts you so that you're always grabbing onto the rear sight and uh, kind of hurts. And the way the hammer is designed, that first you know, half inch of pull is where you're overcoming the most force, and it's really kind of hard to get it going out of there. Um, now, if you're just firing it in normal operation, it's going to lock back on the last round. Everything's going to behave, and, and no one's really going to care. But it's a mild annoyance, and that's why I was happy to see most of the more modern uh, models in this do have that extension. Um, let's see, what else about this one? It has magazine safety. Okay, have to look and see how that works. It has regular operating safety. Can't be put on when the gun's discharged. This one has a threaded barrel. Uh, and that's that's what's there. So, without further ado, uh, let's look at how this thing's held together. Looks like uh, we've got a hex nut there. Let's see if we can figure out what size that bad boy is. <clears throat> If I'm lucky, it'll be this size. Let's see if I'm lucky today. Do, 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 do. Feeling not so lucky. Try the next one. Is it the same darn size? No. Do, 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 do. Fail. All right. So. really sure enough 764s go figure hmm that's in there tight large 760 uh, 764 is not the most common size in the universe so hopefully there we go <clears throat> getting the right size getting it moving so the last thing we want to do is strip out the thing that seems to be holding it all together taking the uh, side panels off first. Actually, you know what we're going to do? Before we go all the way into there, of course, a different size. Lord have mercy. The top two screws, and it does have a, a lock washer on them, I believe they're even two different sizes. They're actually what's holding in the guts, as I recall. Oops. Let's actually pick the right size tools when we do this. Do, 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 do. So if we take these two screws off, the rear being uh, longer than the front, so take, take note of that so you don't put them on backwards later, uh, then the entire sight assembly comes off. And uh, now we can actually see some of the stuff. So before we actually get the barrel apart, we're going to look at this and uh, how this works. So you've got a recoil rod and spring. And you can see by the fact that the recoil rod is uh, tucked, sticking out the front a little bit there, that it's already under some spring tension. Um, as it goes back, caught the hammer. 
Um, that rod stays there and we can press the spring along and then it's going into uh, that little uh, plastic plate on the back. So we can lift this out a little bit to kind of get us started um, to try and get some some room because what we're going to do is we're going to grab that spring, pull it forward to get some of that pressure off. And that's going to let us lift that plate out along with the entire uh, firing pin assembly. At this point, the rest of the slide just comes right off. Now, if you happen to uh, watch the video on the Smith & Wesson Victory 22, then you're about to get deja vu. So what's on uh, this spring system here is there's a little tiny C-clip. Uh, don't lose it. They stink to try and replace. Um, but the rest of this mechanism uh, is starting to look real familiar because 22s kind of often follow this simple pattern where the <coughs> firing pin is uh, contained just in a little plastic uh, casing because it just doesn't need to be that that strong essentially um, it's going to poke out of the breech face just enough the metal there to support the rim of the cartridge and just come right out and poke the side of that cartridge so um, if we needed to take this off to clean it we would relieve the pressure on the spring and pop off this c-clip but because these are fragile and i don't have a replacement one and i don't want to spend an hour crawling around on the floor looking for that one after i lose it I'm just going to pop out the pin that's retaining the firing pin for a second so we can see what the spring inside is doing. So uh, this was the pin going through the body and uh, this is the firing firing pin mechanism. Now this is tragically symmetrical uh, in terms of there's no obvious top or bottom but at the uh, business end it's going to obviously come down to a slant and uh, that's going to determine what the actual top and, and bottom is. And I can tell from the wear pattern on mine that it looks like the, uh, the flat blade side um, looks like it's uh, do, 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 the left, which actually means that when it strikes, it's not going to be over here, it's going to be over here. And uh, based on where I see the wear and tear, it's about halfway down. So I can see fouling up on the top a little bit and a worn part on the bottom, which means that's the contact part. Oops, I said there was nothing in here, but actually the extractor is still in there, so we'll take a look at that later. Um, and then this spring is not directional. There's no front or back to it. Uh, so just not that much going on. So slide that back in. And, uh, this pin not in there under a great amount of pressure it's really being you know the pin doesn't drift because it has nowhere in the body to drift and again this um, back plate uh, you know it's got a, a concave shape where the end of it sits and uh, it doesn't actually bottom out on the plate itself if you notice that little pin goes past it um, so that this shouldn't wear out that fast because it's uh, it's not really absorbing that pressure the back of the pin is really being stopped it's uh, mainly there to just buffer um, the uh, the spring and the the uh, retaining clip so the retaining clip doesn't get worn out so it really is kind of holding the clip in place so um, unlike the victory 22 that we did uh, this one has no nothing to help you uh, this is a standard looking extractor system where there's a spring in here pushing on this detent which is pushing the extractor forward and you know if there's a trick to getting these out I, I, I never learned it um, I tend to sit here and fiddle with it try and find something thin enough in there to get thin enough to get in there and uh, separate the two 
and then immediately move and lose it. Um, once you get something in there, then you can put something else slightly larger and more manipulable, like a punch. And uh, if all goes well, you can use the punch to get enough space in there to actually let the extractor itself drop out. And then you can tip it and your spring and this, the, uh, the detent come out. And now that they're out, get the fur off the mat. And you can see that the uh, detent just sits on the back of it, uh, riding there, uh, effectively pushing it in and forward. So that's that whole system. Putting these back together, fortunately, tends to be a little bit easier because um, they kind of self-seat once you push them back. Uh, much, much easier to get in than out. <laughs> set all that aside for now and um, we we're starting to take the barrel off so I'm going to continue to do that because uh, it does make the gun easier to manipulate now if you don't really have a reason to do this if you're not actually changing the barrel it's not really a necessary maintenance part for cleaning or anything um, I don't remember if you have to get this screw all the way out or not so Keep turning it a little bit at a time until we find out for sure. Oh, 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 that might be just enough. So uh, the screw itself actually comes to a point. Point um, drives in uh, to that area, um, and effectively just wedging the whole thing together. It's really a single point of contact within within the frame. So two pieces of metal just holding each other in. <coughs> and now you can you know get it this to clean the living light you know daylights out of it. Um, Really not much to it. It's a big heavy barrel drilled straight through. The holes are tapped for the sights. Um, but this is uh, not a sleeved barrel to my understanding. It is actually just a big milled heavy as hell barrel. Great for target shooting. for when we put it together. All right, so uh, the grips, pop the grips off. Um, where'd my screwdriver go? Handy dandy screwdriver. And well, it's helpful to have some bits, kibbles and bits, kibbles and bits. What you're gonna find on the buck mark when you get this the grips off, that the grips are actually holding in a, a lot of the other components. Um, it's a curious design, but basically, suddenly all these things are flopping around loose in here, because uh, literally the side of the grip was all that was holding them uh, firmly to the frame. So um, the slide lock, you can see the, the spring that it's activated on is in there, um, but you know, not a not a ton of ton of pressure there. So that pops right off. The spring actually looks like it uh, might have gotten pinched somewhere in its life. Have to check on that. The safety um, is held in by a little bit more than that. <clears throat> uh, so let's go flip over and look at the other side. So, well, just tapping on the magazine release lets us see that that's also just held in by the side. This is a one piece uh, of plastic, plastic or metal, I'm not even, actually I guess it is 
Um, based on the fact that it's shiny, I'm going to go with aluminum. Um, and this spring is just a leaf spring um, that was laying, literally just lying there. And so all of the tension is created by just the uh, that slight curve in the leaf spring and the fact that the side panel essentially holds it in. And so when the magazine is pushed, that would be pushing it fairly, you know, significantly against the leaf spring. Um, and again, it, you're, you're really using the grip panel to, to hold your bits in. And uh, this long bar is the magazine safety. And um, again, another, I, I complained about this in the last magazine safety. Um, Rather than something in the magazine top triggering it when the magazine is fully seated, it, it it kind of did it the other way around. It's the bottom that determines that the magazine is seated. So it's just this foot that ends up pushing in on this little lump right here, which is attached to that metal bar. And if you notice, the trigger bar is being pulled down when that magazine goes in, and this bump gets pushed up. This whole bar is going to come up, and that's going to let the trigger bar lift up into the operating position. When the trigger bar is down, that's the disconnected position. So when it's up, now it's actually going to be engaging the sear somewhere, which we'll get to. It's actually right there. And the disconnect stroke just pushes it down. Um, the, the sear is... Uh, do, do, do. This piece here, it's behind the hammer. This is our hammer. This is a, a wire pin uh, piece uh, ejector. It's just a thicker steel wire. I don't know why they didn't build a stronger one in there, but it is a very, very old design. Um, and like I said, I really don't like these safeties like this. Uh, I don't like magazine safeties in general, but I, I get them. Um, but again, why you would why you would make it something that you could accidentally trip uh, from the bottom of the gun as opposed to actually requiring a magazine? I, I guess the flip side of it is that that could be some safety reason too. If you absolutely must drop that hammer and you know everything is safe, you don't have to get something all the way up in there if the slide couldn't be removed or whatever and for some reason you had to drop that hammer you know you could still do that by just sticking something in on the bottom side so i'm going to pull that out from underneath the safety and off of its spring and then this little spring here is the uh trigger return spring as well so that that uh and that's sitting in here just that leg of the spring pushes back on it, which means that uh, the trigger is being pulled forward by this spring. So trigger return spring. Um, like I said, this little groove is where the magazine dis um, the magazine safety comes in. This bump is the disconnect when the slide rides over it, it pushes it down. This little notch back here is where it's catching the sear. Now that the tension is off, that magazine safety can be lifted out and uh, this pin is actually holding in the rest of that plastic body um, and, and this the wire of the magazine safety just just sits uh, relatively loosely in there and the spring is contoured to match the lines of the of the frame and so you have got to be careful not to bend it when you take it in or out or it's you know, you're never going to get it bent quite back to the exact position so um, when this sear is pushed backwards, that will cause the hammer to release. And I'm going to do it with a screwdriver, just because I don't feel like hurting my thumb. I said that, now I'm looking at it thinking, am I wrong? Yes, I'm wrong. It's pushed forward. Sorry. Sorry. Um, So the hammer, the sear surface, the sear mating surface of the hammer is all on the back side. And the sear hooks over that. Um, but we'll, we'll look at the geometry of the sear. It is a little bit counterintuitive that uh, 
moving the sear towards the hammer is actually releasing it but that's because the release portion is going to be on the opposite side of this pin so while we move it forward the actual engagement is happening underneath which means us moving it forward is moving the back of the, the tail of the sear away from where that hammer is uh, trying to do its thing um, well, that hammer is under a boatload of tension and I don't remember where the hammer spring is but it's buried in there somewhere the safety can we see how the safety works yet I don't know if we can cock it that gives us a little more visibility into the uh, hammer region it's definitely blocking the sear I can't move the sear forward but uh, I think until I get some of these parts out, I'm not going to know exactly why. And I'm debating about which of those parts is going to come out easiest first. Uh, we can safety is this spring back here. Excuse me, the sear is this spring back here, but. If you notice, the pin is peened in on this side, but not on this side, which kind of tells us... Oh, I'm sorry. It's even worse. It's uh, that That's actually the, the spring. Um, oh, hell. It's under the damn safety. Okay, then. I guess we are going to have to get clever. We have to figure out how we get the safety out when this bar here that's holding this spring in does it go over that or is that bar attached to that oh it goes over it so maybe if we want to work our hammer pin out that way Again, can't tell what the geometry of this spring is, and I don't want to mangle it. Peekaboo! Not sure if this spring is actually retaining the uh, pin there or not. Let's give it a love tap and see if that gives us any uh, hint. Do, 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 do. Yes, it's a retaining spring, so we can't tap that out we go the other way it's going to start to push this whole thing around John Moses Browning we summon your spirit to tell us how the hell this thing works all right that didn't work I have to have a seance later thing coming up maybe that's the trick that they want us to uh, to get this spring off first oh that could be there's my pliers theory here is that if this spring were pushed back, now it's uh, past that pin, which means we'll be able to drive the pin out uh, the other side of the gun now. And now we slide the spring past where it was, and we can see the geometry of that spring is pretty crazy. So. As well as looping around that pin, it's got a bend in it in two different angles. It's bent up where it loops around, it's bent back there, and then it has a, a hook where it actually engaged the, uh, the slide lock lever. Something tells me this is bent and that's not its 100% proper shape. So now that that's moving and grooving, we're going to be able to just drive it the rest of the way out pretty easily. Oops. Just to line it up with the 
hole in the hockey puck. Alright, so that pin, and that's the groove I was referring to, that, that uh, the spring locks into that groove, snapped in, and we snapped it past it to take it apart. And now my punch is the only thing holding the hammer in. Oh, or so I thought. Let's see. Oh, golly me. Was I wrong? And the sear is supposed to come out first? Well, that's how that works. So once that's the hammer pin is out, the safety can rotate all the way down, at which point this plate, that this is essentially a retaining plate for both pins, more or less, um, can, can fall away. And uh, now our, our sear pin can come out from the side that it's not peened in from. Safety's going to be flopping in the way, so still a little worried about that, but let's see what happens. Pudwing! Don't forget that the hammer is under a great deal of pressure, and once it's no longer blocked, it comes launching out into your chest like an alien. Do, 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 do. Oh no, a hammer pin. Huh. One silliness after another. Push that back in just for a second uh, to see what's going on there. I've caught on the hammer strut here on my safety. Man, that's really in the way. out of the way. Well, now it's caught on the sear. I guess that's an improvement. This is a crazy shaped thing. Um, well, either way now I have enough room to get the sear out of the way. Of course, the hammer spring is still poking its way out, so still going to probably launch a bunch of these parts as we come out, and we'll look for a smarter way to put it back together once we can see how all those parts are really interacting. Uh, I do still have that hammer strut pressure, but it's coming up on the end, so let's just drop our sear out. Oh, hammer strut still sticking in there. Jeez. starting to think that the intelligent way you're supposed to do this is to, while the hammer is still in there, effectively holding that hammer strut out of the way, that's when you take advantage of the space to manipulate the safety enough to get it out the side. Oops. My safety spring, I'm sorry, my sear spring and pin just kind of fell out on their own get back to those in a second after we figure out how to get that safety out of the damn way to get past the hammer strut. There we go. <clears throat> so yes, the intelligent way to have done that would have been while the hammer was still in there, uh, under under tension, holding you know down with the hammer strut, 
uh, that we would have started the hammer pin a little bit so that the say so that it cleared the safety uh, excuse, yeah the safety and then manipulate the safety out um, if possible you know from that position and then taking the rest of it apart because I'm thinking that the safety oops excuse me I think of how that gets it gonna go in without tilting in any direction or do you actually have to angle it no matter how you slice it huh. yeah I mean this hole is really barely big enough for this guy to come in and out of at all and it looks like it's always gonna go at an angle maybe there's not an easy way Well, this is how we learn. Uh, that might work. Because you should be able to rotate it in. And then you shouldn't be... Yes, yeah, so maybe that's it. Once you once it's free of the hammer, you'll be able to rotate it all the way around. And then maybe you've got enough room to manipulate it. Oof, don't know. We'll try that a couple times when we go to put it back together. Uh, the part that we didn't really get to see because it fell out uh, once there was no more tension on it was the uh, the sear system, the sear spring rather, and uh, that was in there like this, I think, with that leg uh, sticking out and the other leg trapped underneath. And uh, the sear, the bottom of the sear there, that shape, uh, that dent there, is because that's where it rides uh, on that leg. So that's how the sear is being pushed around. And it is actually the very bottom of the sear, from the looks of it, that interacts with the hammer. That's why it's all polished up. It's because that's how the sear is holding on to it. And when our trigger bar pulls the sear forward, that's going to rotate the bottom of it backwards off the hammer, and the hammer can come forward. So there's no there's no half cock notch on this bad boy or anything. Once the uh, hammer cams back, the sear spring pops it in there. Trigger pops it off. Bango bango. And this funny little hammer strut is designed to just match the angle to get at our fairly substantial hammer spring. And uh, the safety itself, <clears throat> if our sear is in the gun like this, and our safety was on the other side of it, and you move the safety up, my guess is that that, yes, the reason that this left leg is trimmed down is because the safety is fitted. And this is designed so that normally, whoops, let's try that again. Sear pin. So looking at this kind of from underneath, essentially, maybe an easy way to look at it. Um, when the safety's off, the sear can can swing uh, back and forth over this leg, but when the safety is on, that brings this piece to right behind the sear. And so the way they do that, this piece is oversized, and when they put it together the very first time, the safety won't be able to engage. Uh, and then you file off a thousandth of an inch, and you keep refitting it until it just clears it. That way the the safety when the safety is on there's literally no space left for the sear to move and it's just tucking up right behind it and holding it firmly in place and that's the safety so it is purely a sear blocking safety what's left up front is just the uh, trigger pin strange design that pin is 
convex on one side and concave on the other. Normally you do that and you would knock things out in the direction of the uh, concave side this so the pin doesn't wander around. Let's make sure that we're not tearing anything up as we do that. No, it seems to be moving. But as curiosity gets the better of me, I'm now wondering if, uh, if they really wanted us to go that direction or not. So I'm going to see if it's uh, smoother sailing knocking it out the other side of the gun. And I would say that answer is no. It's not. Matters not. Drive that pin out. And there's another pin in the trigger. And that would be the pin that the uh, trigger bar grabs onto. And I, I'm not so sure how we get that bad boy out. Oh, look at that. It's not quite a blind pin. Uh, so what they've done is they've drilled a hole on the left side of the frame so that you can line it up and drive that pin out um, even though you can't really see it. Of course, if you don't actually line it up, none of that's going to work. And I would also guess that the more intelligent people among us would actually have done that with the trigger pin in place so that it's harder to uh, not get off center there. So I'm going to put the trigger pin at least partially back in to hold it in place. And that'll make it a little easier for me to line up this other pin is actually running you know, through the trigger. Knock it out. Alright, so now that pin is knocked out of the trigger. The trigger pin itself. Knock back out. I'm gonna knock you out. And that trigger just slides out. It's too fat to go in from the top, so it slides in and up through the actual trigger guard. trigger pieces and what's left in here feels like uh, a spring and a big piece of plastic and a roll pin holding him in so get Mr. Roll Pin Punch just so we can say we took it all apart so it gets easier to go out this side uh oh pins holding the whole thing in so I'm gonna put just a little pressure on that and gently release and there we go so spring is sitting in there roll pin is going about there just to hold it in place but to give it room to move up and down uh, and push against the spring and that's essentially Unless something is pushing up against the bottom of that little round, woo, this little round nubbin, this wire was our magazine release sitting in the side of the gun. So it's going to be basically that spring is going to be pushing it down, and the magazine's going to compress that spring and hold it up. When the magazine comes out, this little hook gets pulled back down, and as we saw, that pulls the trigger bar into the disconnected state. And that's all she wrote. So, uh, well, let's throw it back together and see if we can't uh, come up with a better, better plan for taking that part apart. That was a little. Uh, whenever something is that difficult, you're doing it wrong. There, it's not that you're doing it wrong. It's just that there's definitely a better way to do it. 
um, when people design firearms, they do design them uh, with a plan for how people are going to maintain them. Um, most guns are you know, military oriented or, or target shooting oriented and, and no matter how you slice it, they're, they're going to need to be maintainable for people to pay the kind of money that you want them to pay to purchase them. So maintenance is, is always a factor in gun design. Um, do, 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 as is apparently Where did my giant roll pin go? Tap that in just a little bit off center, and I've bound it up. So I'm going to tap it back out just a smidge. Just to say I'm sorry and get this thing moving again. This time I will make sure it's a little bit better centered. Look through. Donkeys, I bound it again. this wire in here as a guide to make sure I'm not uh, yeah I think that was my problem if I look at that is that straight enough yeah there we go so using the wire to actually make sure it was lined up straight now I've got it going far enough that it's held in by the roll pin, but it's still uh, depressible, which means we can uh, drive it the rest of the way home, switch to the roll pin punch, and if I recall, this one was not perfectly even, I think it came out more on the right side of the gun than the left. So what we're going to do is take a quick peek at the hand guards, and sure enough, on the left hand guard there's a space for that roll pin. On the right hand guard, oh, well, it looks like there's a space there too. So apparently you can make it symmetrical. So now I'm just going to eyeball it and see how far off I am. It's pretty close. We don't have to let the perfect be the enemy of the good here. So, now that that's there, So, I think we have to get our hammer system in first, and that, that's really the question, is whether we can get the hammer in before the, the uh, safety or not, or whether they have to be in there at the same time. So there's really not room. Thinking here. 
This is my sear pin. This, I'm sorry, that's the sear spring. This was the sear pin itself. And the hammer pin had the notch on the side. This is really going to be the trick to see if we can, oops, line this hammer up enough to get that pin in. damage that pin. The reality is that under the as much tension as it is, it's really hard to get it to line up perfectly with a frame there. Maybe this is a good place to use slave pins for some of this. Or see if I can get a punch in there to relieve some of that hammer tension. too far. Just far enough. Alright, so now that pin is not coming out far enough to actually you know, engage where we know it eventually will with the retaining plate or to captivate the spring that it's going to captivate. And my theory was that maybe, however, there's enough room to sneak with the safety back in. to live with disappointment because I appear to be completely wrong. <laughs> wow, that sucks. I mean, the safety got in the way of detent big time of the, of the hammer spring. If I put the safety in there first, how the hell am I going to get them both in there at the same time? I could just force it in there, I suppose, but it's bad for things. Especially the safety, because you don't want to change its shape. You bend that safety a little bit, and, you know, like I said, it was precision fit. That's the other thing I'm just thinking through. If you precision fit it, usually there's a way to uh, rapidly get it in and out of the gun so you don't have to do a complete disassembly. I can't imagine someone having to take the hammer all the way out every damn time. Although, you know, the hammer does appear. Let me check this one thing out. 
Ah, look at that. The hammer it does have wiggle room on the left and right because we haven't got it in there yet. So maybe all I needed to do was get the hammer positioned and that would give me enough clearance. Oh man, that's close. That's so close. I can feel it. No. I'm not feeling it. Well, when life gives you lemons, make Gatorade. The mystery of the safety wants to go in, but it's going to get in the way of the hammer spring. So if we put it in first, is there any position that we can move it to where it's out of the way of the hammer spring? It's kind of the next question. So in its operating position itself, Yeah, that's too damn big. Let's see if this is going to work. I guess is a temporary hammer retaining mechanism. Why not? Really, kids? Really? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I promise you I'll tell you an easy way to do this when I figure it out. As soon as that happens, I'll let you know.
<laughs> that was funny. Got it all the way in. No way. Uh -huh. All right, so I think we just found the dirty little secret. The uh, when the hammer is at its forwardmost position, you can actually use it in conjunction with its hammer leg to depress the hammer spring pretty easily. You can get a hold of it, but you can only get the pin partially in because the hammer strut itself is blocking the hole. But you can get it through the halfway through the body of the hammer. So this pin is about you know this far into the hammer, or even this far, you could tell. The hammer strut is in this middle spot. So it's halfway through, and in that halfway through position, the hammer can come far enough forward that the safety pops in and still can clear underneath it and get to where it needs to go. And that means that uh, once we get it that far, the next step, I wanna leave some wiggle room here for the thing, is Let's see. I think we're going to have to move the hammer over just a little bit back in that direction. Do, 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 do. Gonna make room for the safety. Jeepers. Well, I thought that was the the solution to my problem. Because essentially once once I actually move the hammer far enough to put the pin in, then the hammer can't go as far forward. So there's a position here where this hammer pin can go in, but it's going to bind up. Now if we drive it back out a little bit, at the same time, we should be moving the hammer towards the far side. And I get to that spot where it pops forward, but doesn't actually pop all the way off the pin. I'm thinking that that's the secret, because then, look at that, safety all the way up and in place. So I guess the really intelligent person would have just started that whole process from the far side. Although, would that have, would that have, no, that would have blocked me too. I guess this is the only way to do it. Well, I'm not going to say the only way, but the way that's working. So now we kind of want to hold that more or less up and in place and again our, our hammer has come forward enough that it's being blocked so by pulling it back we can get that pin moving again and of course then we've got to get everything lined up one piece at a time as we move through
Getting warmer. We've now hooked the safety. That's a good sign. And now we're just in that state where we kind of have to relieve some tension to get that wiggling back over where we want it. Ah, the obvious. Lean it on a surface, and then line the hole up on the far side. Alright, not a rocket scientist. So remember, this pin isn't a tight fit pin. Hitting it with a hammer, generally not nearly as necessary uh, as I just went through. Um, and that the idea there is that it, it has to be perfectly lined up. And so... Uh, that's under enough tension that it's going to be off kilter but when you lay it on one side to provide the pin pressure you can then use a combination of you know thumbing the hammer back and using the magazine which is hooked around or excuse me the safety which is hooked around that to basically guide it off into uh, into the hole all right so Eventually, we're going to push that the rest of the way through uh, when we're ready to hook the side plate here. Um, and I'm trying to think of, should that happen before? No, no, the sears. Oh, no. Tell me I haven't, I haven't made it so I can't get my sear in now. Oh, I'm going to cry. Do you want to see me cry? I think you're going to get to see me cry. As we said with the sear pin, it's peened on that side, but it's blocked by the friggin' safety on this side, which means I was supposed to put it in before the... Alright, well, you know, that's how we learn, by making the mistakes. All right, so tap it, tap it, tap it, tap it, tap it, tap it. And the safety was uh, loose enough here, and we had tapped that pin all the way out to the point of where the hammer can pop back into its only half caught by the pin position. Tap it, tap, 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 tap. Now that pin is just barely holding the hammer and that means we can not only get the uh, safety in but we can also get our sear in which means we got to put a bunch of stuff in at once here so the hammer barely being held in there we're gonna get the sear spring tucked up underneath whoops and I did it upside down. Did you see that? Did you catch that? Let's try it like that. Well, shit fire, Batman. That tells me I'm either thinking about it wrong still, because that leg of the can't or that look at the spring can't get down there um, 
unless I put it under an awful lot of pressure. Uh, so if I put the long leg in first and then try and position it, oh, well, maybe I can. Oh, all right, not so crazy after all. Um, now, sear, sit in there on its little leg. The sear spring, excuse me, sear pin. that works. So let's push that back out just enough. plate on like that and then the safety I'm going to pop over that plate it's going to help us line the whole damn thing up a little better than we did last time so I think we've got the order now which means that if I just Gently use the hammer and the side of the frame to push that pin in. I'm going to get it moving a lot further along than I did before. Having some light issues today. Let's poke in that hole to see exactly where we are. I don't think we've. Have we? Oh, we're really close. Oh yeah. We're definitely uh, got the safety hooked now. So now we should just be able to manipulate the safety a little bit and we should be popping up through our frame just the way we want to. And before we go too far, I'm going to remember that spring, that itty bitty spring, there it is, that uh, is our oops, the operating spring for this guy, our, our slide lock and release. And this leg here is going to come up through there and, and move that up and down. And what I noticed the first time I took it apart here was that it felt like that was kind of a weak mechanism. So I'm going to go make a minor tweak to this spring. And I don't want to open up the spring itself here. I think that the spring is tweaked right about here. gives me a little bit better angle and what we did same as when we got it out is we slid that spring uh, well back behind where it really belongs so that the, the pin is going to clear it and we push the pin up the rest of the way here Oops. That might have been overkill. That was overkill.
So we push the sear pin out far enough that our spring should be able to hook onto it. If I've calculated everything right, I should just be able to slide it forward and now it should be in the latched position, which gives me the tension that I was hoping for. It's not quite all the way there. room. I don't know why this is being so difficult. If I were a smarter man, I'd So what I'm seeing here that I'm doing wrong is that this piece, if I move it aside, I don't have my my spring hooked on here yet. So it's supposed to hook around and hold that in place. But I think I, I dinged it. So our spring force is there, everything's more or less lined up. I can cock the gun, our sear catches it, pull off the sear releases, cock the gun, safety on, can't pull the sear away, once again. Sear forward. Nice. All right, let's uh, look at some of these other little pieces here to see exactly how lined up we are. This plate still feels just a little bit tight. Um, so I'm gonna make sure that the sear pin is in fact tapped all the way through. quite right but uh, it is flush there which it needs to be so that will work um, trigger um, as we said this this is a half blind pin so we'll put this by back in after we put the main trigger in and the trigger as we said goes in through trigger guard and to aid in assembly, we will push in the beveled end first. And once that lines up with the hole, we use a punch on the concave surface. Drive that bad boy in. And now uh, from this side, be able to get that started relatively easily. And this one we're only going to drive in uh, halfway. Um, 
because that actually rides on that. So the correct how far in does that go is it goes in uh, far enough that it can still engage and operate the trigger bar, uh, but not so far as it's going to interfere with anything else. Um, for instance, like if you'd go that far in, uh, I've pushed it all the way through the trigger like an idiot, and now I've bound it against itself. Yeah. So that's moving. Trigger bar is going to sit over it. Cock it, put the trigger in position, and hold it up like the spring would. Trigger is operational. Outstanding. Um, now, as we mentioned before, everything else was kind of being held in by the side panels itself and the everything else we've got to get going here okay, I gotta put these things in, in a little bit of an order since they're all kinda gonna be one on top of the other get the uh, magazine safety going in there trigger bar is actually gonna come up underneath that so we want to set the trigger bar in there like that, but then the trigger bar is operated by this spring. So get that spring in there all at the same time. And I have a nagging suspicion that that spring does it have an upside down and a right side up? I don't think it does. Alright, and the magazine release, the leaf spring for the magazine release. Nothing holds it in but love and a little bit this side panel, but mostly love. So, testing those functions, magazine safety defeated, trigger works. Um, if I actually put in a magazine. Um, test disconnect is working so the trigger goes off nothing is gonna do anything because it's holding the sear the disconnect has to happen while the hammer comes back this time so now whoops you gotta cock it all the way for that to work Dan cock the hammer and operate the disconnector and now the sear can catch it again and release so the left side of the gun, the last piece to go in is just this piece that we already measured out and uh, hooked over the spring. Now since it's the magazine, at least let's get the magazine out of the way. And again, this cover is all that's holding that together. Safety is working, trigger is working, trigger plus disconnect. Oh. So that's worrying me. Oh, just because the, the sear the hammer has to be cocked way, way back for any of this to work. So that's why my disconnect felt like it wasn't really working. Is cause it, you have to be disconnected at the same time you are all the way cocked back to get the sear to really catch. So, um, your pre-travel is the distance, 
right here where my thumbnail can't quite fit between the back of the sear and the front of that ledge of the trigger bar. That's not a whole lot of pre-travel. And the distance it has to move, if you remember, the sear had a shorter distance between the top here and the sear pin and the actual engagement area. So moving the trigger a little is actually moving the sear a lot. So while there's a good bit of brake force, it is a really short and crisp trigger pull that results. So can't really ask for more than that on a target pistol. That's the way it's supposed to work. <clears throat> um, the other part of reassembly was the screw that was holding the whole thing in there. Now, I have some uh, thread compound. This was, as I recall, was kind of a pain in the butt to get off. So I'm going to spread a little bit of this back onto the threads themselves in the hopes that that will not be quite as tight next time. That's the other thing you might have noticed when I was unscrewing it. I wasn't exactly being a rocket scientist and I kept using the Allen wrench even though it was loose enough that uh, fingers would have worked just fine. I only really need, need the Allen wrench on that last few turns uh, to get it all the way in there. It doesn't really recess that far. We're pretty close. and don't gotta go crazy tight on it or you'll never get it back off um, slide uh, now we're doing all this with the hammer back just because it's easier oh, sorry and the magazine back out so slide can come all the way down and as we saw before, we've got our little plastic piece with the wide side to receive the back of the pin. And that whole thing is going to tuck down in here. Um, but in order to make it a little easier, we're going to lift it up just a bit to start. So we're going to lift it just a little bit out of the... Out of, whoops. Now we're going to drop everything. Let's try that again. Yeah, that's how we'll do it. All right. Put the plastic piece in and uh, start that that way. And then once uh, this this is come the, the the rod is coming too far forward because we haven't actually perfectly lined up that back plate it'll click in there there's actually a little tiny hole in the metal of that leg sticking up in the frame so it is bottoming out all the way in there and it's only when it's all the way in there clicked in that uh, it comes back far enough that it can go all the way back down so that is all sitting in there and then we just toss the top back on and remember that the rear was the long one. Do, do, do. And don't forget the uh, the lock washers. I assume everybody knows this, but when you're tightening screws and there's more than one, you can always tighten them all up. Uh, just just put them in loose and. Um, and then tension them you know, alternately. Don't put all the torque on one screw and then go try and screw in a second one. Let them, you know, work in tandem to find uh, their their depth and center. It'll help you keep things squared up and make your screws 
work better, it lasts longer, and since you're taking the sights off on this one every time you do it, you really want them to go back on in the same place so you don't have to go and mess with your windage and elevation every time you go to shoot the thing. So now that it's fully back together, we should be able to run through our function check. Cock it, magazine hold back, magazine release, pull the trigger, it fires. So let's do that again. Put the safety on, pull the trigger, she no fire. Drop the magazine, take the safety off, pull the trigger, she no fire. Disable the safety and the magazine safety, pull and hold the trigger. We fire, we rack it, keep holding it. Now we're going to listen for the reset. And now we're going to pull the trigger again. That's the whole cycle. So we got a good disconnect and a good reset. And the gun is fully working with all its bits. And that, ta-da, that's the Browning Buckmark 22 Long Rifle Target Pistol. Have fun. Stay safe.